Hey everyone, welcome back to our Bible Deep Dive. Um, we've been examining the question, is the Bible trustworthy? Can we actually dive into this collection of works and say that it's true and reliable and start to build our lives around it? We've already reflected on how the Bible is remarkably accurate in its um, historicity, in the way that it um, presents and challenges ancient worldviews, and in how it was preserved and transmitted uh, generation after generation. Today, we are going to get very specific as we seek to understand that the Bible is remarkably consistent in telling God's story. The Bible is remarkably consistent in telling God's story. This is what the Bible is most interested in. Uh, people turn to the Bible for many things, for poetry, for history, for an answer book to life, for direction, for a picture of ancient worldviews. Um, it certainly contains all of those things, but those are not the main point of the Bible. As we said before, the Bible is a library of works co-authored by God and man with one purpose, to point us to Jesus. So the Bible is a lot of things, but the main theme in the Bible is telling God's story, who he is, what he's like, and then where we fit into that story. If the Bible was primarily interested in giving us, uh, for example, a scientific explanation of the origins of the universe, then it would give us that instead of what we're given in Genesis 1-3, to which is a story about who God is, who we are, and how uh, and why we are here, and where we fit into God's plan. That's not to say that the Bible doesn't address things like science or history. We've talked about that before. But where there are questions about how the Bible tackles other stories, whether it's the origin of human life, or the things like the flood, or miracles, we must remember first that these are to be read through, and always through, the lens of God's story, and not... Uh, reading through our 21st century stories first. What do I mean by that? Well, let us take me, let me take us through an example through the book of Jonah. Uh, the question before us is, what is the point of the book of Jonah? Many of you have read this book before. It's only four short chapters. It's a quick kind of 10 minute read. And so what's the point of Jonah? Is it history? Is it is its main point to talk about the science of living inside of the belly of a fish for three days? Is it to tell us about uh, a man of God and his deeds and misdeeds? No, that's not the point of the book of Jonah. Jonah is a parable. So we must read it that way first. So what's the point of a parable of Jonah? Well, the point, like any parable, is this. At the time that Jonah would have been written, God appears to have um, God's people appear to have abandoned God and have broken the covenant. Jonah is a story where God appears to one of his own people, uh, a prophet named Jonah, someone who should understand and respond. But instead of doing that, Jonah flees instead. But he's unable to get away from God, and though he ran away and wanted nothing to do uh, with God, God watches over him, he saves him from drowning, and he deals kindly with him. Jonah still only half-heartedly does uh, what God asked him to do after all of this. And then he goes outside and he waits for the city uh, and these terrible people that he hates uh, for God to bring destruction on all of them. Um, but in a crazy plot twist, the bad guys repent and they receive God's mercy. Meanwhile, the so-called hero of the story, Jonah, who is supposed to get it, uh, finds himself on the outside looking in, pouting and completely at odds uh, with who he believes God is. And so what's the point of Jonah if it's a parable? Well, the point of Jonah is to function. What's a parable do? It's to function like a mirror to God's people at the time, um, helping them to take a hard look at themselves where they realize that those who are on the outs uh, are actually find themselves in Meanwhile, those people like Jonah, who think they are in, are in danger of being on the outs, but they don't get it. That's what the point of a parable is. It's to uh, be a mirror that kind of reflects ourselves back, um, the story back at us, to help us to think about deeply who we are and which person are we in this story. Um, and so 
this is what the book is about, and it's remarkably consistent with the, the message of the Bible, that God loves and invites us to be partners with him, even when we run away and act like idiots, like Jonah. God constantly forgives and does not want to punish. Like Jonah, God still deals with us gently, even when our ways do not line up with his. But it's a message to stop running away from God and run to him instead. What does this mean? Well, it means that if we pick up Jonah and we demand scientifically, how could it be remotely possible for a giant fish to swallow a man uh, and he can live inside the belly of that fish for three days and even sing songs while he's in there um, and how silly and impossible that all sounds, we have really missed the points of the whole book. The point of the book isn't to explain the possibility of a man being swallowed by a fish um, and living. The point is how God could possibly still love and forgive people who run away from him, which is more unlikely. This is what it means to read the Bible um, as seeing the Bible as consistent in telling the same story, God's story. It does so through different people in different genres of literature at different periods of time, but all 66 books drive home the same message, that God, despite our sin and brokenness, is unwilling to leave us to our own devices and provides us with love and rescue, ultimately seen in Jesus. So we should be amazed that despite being written over thousands of years by different people at different times, the main message of the Bible is the same. As the Bible Project says, the Bible is a unified story that leads us to Jesus. Let me pray. Father God, we thank you that uh, your word is consistent in the one main story that he tells. There are certainly lots of other stories about how we got here and about science and history and poetry and how people lived back then. But more importantly, uh, God, your story is about you, uh, the God of the universe who created the world and everything in it, including us. And God, how despite our lack of love for you, despite our sin and brokenness and rebellion, uh, you uh, will go uh, to extreme lengths to show us your love and generosity and saving grace. And that ultimately is highlighted through the person of Jesus. So Lord, we thank you that, uh, yeah, despite uh, so many different people at different times going through different stuff, they could have written anything um, and we would have had a completely different set of stories. But instead, we have all of these different stories that tell one main story, the story of you and your great love for us. So we thank you that the Bible is trustworthy because it consistently tells that one story. So we pray that as we read it, we will read it with that lens and uh, to understand that each of these stories tells the one story. Thank you, God, for your uh, incredible word to us today. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye.